of all, I would like to really hear from you as to why Ibadriola is pursuing a net zero goal. What are the benefits for you and why is it so important? Thank you, Ursula. We are pursuing a net zero goal because we think it's good for Ibadriola, for the company, but it's also good for, for society. I mean, it's good for Ibadriola because being first mover is the way to take advantage of the opportunities of the green economy in terms of development of new technologies, in terms of value creation, industrial opportunities, new business models. It's also good for Iberdrola because an ambitious approach to this goal allows us to meet with social requirements for more ambition and more transparency. It strengthens our alliances, and it also reduces the transition and reputational risk of fossil fuels. This is good for Iberdrola, but we also think this is good for society. Mm -hmm. It's good for society because it accelerates the solutions of the global uh, climate change problem and also uh, the problem of, of um, air, air pollution is also good because it contributes in our case to create or to generate a cleaner energy, a more competitive energy and a better energy for consumers. And finally, we think it's very good for the economy because it fosters economic development, it develops new investments, it creates new employment and employment that are sustainable and are employments for the future. So, in general, it develops industrial opportunities and it allows us to, to take advantage of these opportunities. What positive action is your company taking already to make the change needed to make net zero a reality? Mm, I think we are doing three things. First, the company Bedrola is already ramping up investments with a further 150 billion euros plan over just 10 years. Mm -hmm. Focus on renewables and smart grids. So, first thing is investment. The second thing is very important that is uh, developing or investing in innovation. Innovation in, in, in new technologies, in floating uh, wind offshore, green hydrogen, green ammonia, green steel. So, we are developing intelligent, digital and innovative solutions for clients. And finally, we are constantly renewing our objectives, climate change objectives, to try to accelerate this objective uh, responding to the social uh, demands. What do you see as the most significant hurdle when it comes to companies achieving net zero? And how have you been able to come, overcome this? How have you been able to deal with these hurdles at, at Ibadrola? Yes, I would say that the most significant hurdles are the lack of climate uh, energy targets and regulatory frameworks. So, in general, Ursula, we, mm. we have the technology, we have the money to invest, mm -hmm. what we need are proper regulatory frameworks. So, if those frameworks are not aligned with the net zero scenario, this is a problem. For instance, the lack of CO2 prices in certain sectors, for instance, the transport sector, uh, energy subsidies to, that will still play a role in, in several sectors in Europe. And one thing that is important that is the administrative barriers and permitted to foster investments. I think that those are the main uh, hurdles to, to, to really accelerate climate action in the power sector.
When we talk a bit more about how you've achieved this and how you've you've really driven this um, as a Bedrola, it'd be great to hear a bit more about the company's experience. So what do you know now that you wish you'd known before, before you started strategizing, before you started planning for a net zero future? Uh, there are two key takeaways from this process. First is that a successful approach requires a strong commitment from the top management, but not only from the top management, but for the from the whole uh, set of employees and businesses. Because to, to, to move to a net zero means or implies a change in the culture of the firm. And the second thing is, uh, as I already mentioned, we need a stable and enabled policy frameworks to, to foster investment in clean technologies. If you were talking to a company that was at the beginning of their journey um, now, what would you share with them? I would share that this key, I mean, that to tackle the transformation process needed in a company is key since the beginning to have a very high level perspective, a CEO level, to make what is needed is a robust alignment mm -hmm. of the business strategy with a net zero scenario. I'd like to uh, talk to you now a bit about how you are engaging with your supply chain and across sectors more broadly to drive the net zero transition across the economy and achieve systemic change. Because it, it is really important, as I understand it, that um, companies work together across the supply chain. Can you tell me a bit more about that, please? Yes, this is a very important question because, I mean, the, the supply chain is, 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 is very important to successful tackle their emissions. Mm -hmm. I mean, the emissions of the supply chain, but also our emissions, because those are our scope three emissions. So. The idea is that we are working very closely with our supply, suppliers to across the value chain. And we are working in alliances, in alliances, working together to decarbonize their processes so they can meet their goals and we can meet our goals. And in this respect, I think it's very important to understand that we are in the middle of an industrial revolution an industrial revolution of green solutions, and there is a growing competition between firms to get advantage of the industrial opportunities. So working of our suppliers to decarbonize this process is good for us, but it's also good for them mm -hmm. to be in a better competitive position in order to take advantage of these industrial opportunities. So a few months ago, of course, um, COP26 took place. It was a major event. There were some uh, enormous outcomes, but perhaps not as um, much ambition as, as we might need at the moment. Um, I would be really interested to hear your reflections on the outcomes from COP and, and what you think needs to happen next in this year uh, as we move towards uh, the next stages of the international discussions. Our view is that there were very positive uh, developments of, at COP26. And the most positive development was that, that it kept alive the 1.0 goal. Mm -hmm. and, and why? Because it created, as you know, this mechanism whereby countries must review their climate targets in 2022 instead of every five years and this is the message and this mm -hmm. is the message not just for countries but also for firms for ngos mm -hmm. 
for alliances that we all must review our mm -hmm. target this year. So we all have the challenge mm -hmm. to go to Egypt with a more ambitious target and more urgent target. And it's very important that there must be targets for mm, 2030. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is the key decade to, to assure the, the, the compliance with the Paris Agreement and mm -hmm. all agents, countries, regions, city, financial institutions, firms, we have to go to Egypt with a more ambitious climate target in 2022. Speaking of policies, um, at the moment in Europe, we are looking at the Fit for 55 package, which is um, uh, aimed at goals by 2030, a target by 2030. What are the priorities for you uh, as these le this legislation is discussed? It's very important to highlight the EU leadership in the, in the global climate arena. First, the EU NDC is one of the most ambitious commitments at global level. And second, the so-called Fit for 55 package and the EU climate law mm -hmm. are the most complete and ambitious uh, regulatory package on climate action and energy transition. If I had to choose a theme for, 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 for this year, I will, I will choose the, the idea of accelerate the energy transition. Mm -hmm. And why? Because the energy transition is not the cause, but the solution to the current turbulent energy prices problems we are having in Europe. So mm -hmm. in order to reduce or to, to face this turbulence, we need precisely to accelerate the energy transition mm -hmm. towards a more uh, cleaner and renewable energy system and efficient. Mm -hmm.